So it is a constant process of observing, predicting, evaluating, revising, and trying it again. So there is never a final theory. It's always being improved upon. So I mentioned about correlation, things that occur together. So the positive correlation, by increasing something, you increase something else. Negative could be by decreasing something, something else increases, or uh, by increasing something, something else decreases. And that could be just a coincidence. So what theory does, it allows us to reduce uncertainty about what we're doing. Whether it be educational programming, marketing, conservation, management. Now, if you're a conservator, uh, you know by now that you don't spray objects with arsenic anymore. There are whole categories of works out of the late 19th and early 20th century that are hazardous to handle in American Indian museums. Why? They were laced with arsenic to get rid of insects, pesticides. Didn't destroy the wood, but you sure wouldn't want to handle these things now. They also help us explain. We make sense of the processes involved in those events that we're studying, which include marketing, which include museum visitation. It also gives us, to some degree, predictive precision. It allows us to anticipate outcomes of various events based on what we've seen happen in other circumstances. And then out of theory, policy arrives. And that includes an important body of law in this country. NAGPRA. As a curator, I'll uh, wrap this up with these, I think it's the next two slides. We'll take a break, and then uh, at four o'clock we meet with Ryan and uh, Tatiana. That agenda setting theory. Now this relates mostly to mass media. However, I would argue that as being an institution with mass appeal, as a curator or as an educator, you are in some way agenda setting too in the sense that mass media have a lot of potential to structure how issues are viewed to a public. In other words, we are profoundly affected by mass media, whether we realize it or not. And that starts right from the time we start to comprehend our native language or English or whatever as to we're adults. We are not immune to mass media. We are all affected by it in some way. So very often, a public is responding to not the actual events that occurred, but to a pseudo-environment, the pictures that are created in our heads that are placed there by the, by the media. Well, you may be setting an agenda for a cultural institution that people visit. Because if you're with the National Gallery of Art and you decide that uh, showing works out of Central America and Mexico, the tribal arts there, you're the National Gallery of Art. You're one of the flagships of the United States, and this flagship is showing the work of the Maya, the Aztec, the Colima, and these people who may not, they're, they're still alive, but this hemisphere largely doesn't even aware they're alive anymore, and all of a sudden you're mounting this exhibit you are setting an agenda for a public because you're making them aware based on the power of where you are as the National Gallery. The National Gallery is doing it. This must be important. So in a very subtle way, you are influencing public perception. And then you can decide how the public is going to interpret it. Because I could, using the same art, 
decide I want to focus on the practice of auto-sacrifice. Because in some of those societies, the elite were required to give blood on a daily basis by perforating different parts of their body and bleeding onto a paper and then burning that paper as an offering. Because in the beginning of this creation, the gods themselves gave blood for humans to come to life. So I could focus on just the art, images, as well as the tools for auto-sacrifice. Or, and this is one of the ones where we look at agenda setting, 2012, the end of the world. Or earlier, 12 years ago, Y2K. So as an institution, we can, in some way, affect an agenda for not only the museum, but for people who come to it, public perception. This is really important in a tribal cultural center because you want to make sure that people who are coming to visit are getting complete quality information. So when we look at the interaction between theory and positive change, and I will end it with this, uh, this little section, that we are informing people about important issues and events. That we are influencing attitudes that people have. An attitude is a particular feeling, all right, about something. Now you can say someone has a bad attitude, all right, that's different than the attitudes we're talking about. Attitude we would see as being um, whether someone is strongly in favor of, strongly against, for example, at the extreme, no opinion or no uh, attitude, or slightly in favor of, slightly against, are feeling toward a certain issue, a person. All right, that's how we look at attitudes. And it may be then people's attitudes toward, um, if we're looking at issues and events, how do the people outside of our community view casinos? And why? How do people outside of our communities view smuggling, which is an important issue up my, my way? How do people around my community and outside of it view water issues, grazing issues? So what we're trying to do as curators too is that we want to motivate people to either maintain a behavior or a belief or an attitude. So we're trying to make them hold that and continue to hold it. Or you may want to increase or decrease in a way that you can predict and explain what occurred. You do this with a CAP model, K-A-P, that by giving people more complete knowledge giving them more complete quality information, we shape how they view, how they feel about something, ideally, because someone may have an attitude that's already frozen about something and there's no amount of information you can give someone that's gonna make them change. For example, right now, there is a lot of heat in Congress about an important issue, gun control. And people who belong to the National Rifle Association, you are going to have a hard time helping them have a positive feeling about limiting access to handguns. They already have a preset feeling about gun legislation, and they're against it, unless it allows them to have more guns. And vice versa. You're going to have a hard time convincing someone who is against handgun ownership to be in favor of it. So it isn't always going to happen, but ideally by giving people information, you can influence the way they think or feel about something, and then based on that, it translate into, act, into action. Knowledge, attitude, practice, even uh, can work in a public relations announcement for your museum. You're letting people know this exhibit is coming up. This is why it's important to the community. 
So you want them to feel good about their community? The practice you want them to engage in is to come to the exhibit, to bring their family, and not just come once, but come again and again and again. Maybe even get them to be on the board, or maybe get them to be a contributor to the museum based on the quality of information that you present to them. So it is really important to stay abreast of curatorial theory, should you, in a fit of madness, go into curation. It's exciting because it never stays the same. It changes on a day-to-day -day basis. And we are constantly presented with various cultural, social, and environmental dilemmas that in our various culture centers or museums, we have an opportunity to affect the way people feel about them and even affect their willingness to act. So in a very real way, yes, it is a political endeavor. So take a break, come back at five minutes to four, and then we'll go over to the uh, collection area.